going to take a look at a few different things. We're going to look at the impact of forces on the motion of an object. We're going to look at two of Newton's laws of motion, his first and second law. And then we're going to look at how we can use Newton's second law in calculating different things. So let's start with how forces are motion. So forces can do two different things to an object. They can change the speed or they can change the object's direction and sometimes they'll change both at the same time. So a force comes about due to an interaction between two objects. It might be that the two objects are in contact with each other, it might be through some sort of gravitational force or electric force, but we need two objects to have a force. So if a force acts in the same direction as an object's motion, so you can see in the diagram on the right, the velocity or speed of the object is to the right and the force is also to the right, that would cause the speed of the object to increase. And when the speed of an object is increasing, we say that object is accelerating. So that's if the force is in the same direction as the object. If we have a force in the opposite direction to the object's motion, so we can see that the object is traveling to the left, but the force is acting to the right, that will cause the speed of the object to decrease. And when an object's speed is decreasing, we say that object is decelerating. Okay. So the two conditions we've looked at so far, if the force is in the same direction or the force is in the opposite direction, in either case, we say that the force is parallel to the direction of motion. And what that means is that the direction is not going to be affected by those forces. So those forces can change the speed, but they won't alter the direction of it if the force is parallel to the motion of the object. If, however, the force is applied at a right angle to the motion of the object, like we can see in the diagram, that causes the direction to change, but not the speed. So what we'd say is that the, the green force we can see is perpendicular to the direction of motion, or it's at 90 degrees to the direction of motion. And we can see that the dotted line shows the path it would take if there was no force. And we can see that the path bends because of the force acting there. Okay, so what about if they're not parallel or perpendicular? Well, if we have forces at angles like this, they can cause both the speed and the direction of an object to change. So you can see this green force here is going to increase the speed of the object and it's going to make it the path bend to the downwards. The red force is going to decrease the speed of the object and make it bend in the upwards direction that we can see there. So We'd say the green forces would be accelerating it, the red force would be decelerating it, but both would cause the direction to change. Okay, so that finishes describing the impact of forces on the motion of an object. Let's have a look at how we can use that to describe Newton's first law. So first, let's actually look at what the first law is. So Newton's first law of motion states that a body, and a body is just like an object, for instance, uh, that a body at rest will remain at rest. So uh, an object that is stationary will stay stationary um, unless a force acts on it. External just means it's a force coming from another object. So we've got if there's no force, if the object was stationary, it will stay stationary. The next part says if the body in motion will stay at constant speed in a straight line unless acted on by an external force. So what that means is um, an object will keep traveling in a straight line at the same speed unless a force acts. So previously we saw that we need a force to change the speed or the direction or both. So the opposite of that follows then that if there is no force, the speed and direction must stay the same. And that's what Newton's first law essentially tells us there. 
So if we were to plot a speed versus time graph, we can see it would be a horizontal line like there because the speed stays at the same value the whole time because there's no force acting. OK, so let's uh, give you a few scenarios to have a think about. So we've got an object traveling in a straight line with the speed versus time graph shown. So the question is, has a force acted? And if so, what direction did it act? So what we need to do is to pause this video, have a think and come up with an answer and then restart it again when you're ready and we'll go through the answer. So. OK, so um, from the graph, we have seen you can see that speed is increasing. So if speed is increasing, a force must have acted and it must have acted in the same direction as the object's motion, which causes it to accelerate there. OK, so that's that one. Next scenario, we've got an object traveling in a circle with the speed versus time graph shown. Has a force acted? And if so, what direction did it act? So pause this, think about what your answer is going to be, and then we'll check it. OK, so this one might surprise you. Um, yes, there has been a force, um, because if the object is traveling in a circle, that means its direction is changing. But because the speed stays constant, that means the force must have acted perpendicular to the object's direction of motion because it only changes the direction, not the speed. OK, so that finishes looking at Newton's first law. Let's now have a look at Newton's second law. So Newton's second law of motion states that the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the resultant force acting on the object if its mass, the object's mass stays constant. And it also tells us that the acceleration will be in the same direction as the resultant force. So what do we mean by resultant force? Well, it's when we take all the forces that act on an object and we model them as one force. And I'll look at that more in a later video. So for now, we're just going to deal with objects with just one force acting on them, and then that will come in more use later on. So what we can learn from this is that if resultant force is zero, the law tells us the acceleration has to be zero, uh, which makes sense with Newton's first law, if you think about it, because if there's no force, so force is zero, the speed and direction have to stay the same, which means acceleration is zero. So that works. What this law also tells us, if there's a constant resultant force acting, that means the acceleration of the object will have to be constant as well, as long as the mass stays the same. So a way of representing Newton's second law is the graph we can see. So if we plot resultant force against acceleration, if mass is constant, we should get a straight line that goes through zero, zero. That's a directly proportional relationship. OK, so. We can represent Newton's second law in a mathematical form, and it's an equation you may be familiar with. It's normally written as F equals MA, but the F in the equation stands for resultant force. The M stands for mass and A stands for the acceleration. So from mathematical form that we can see if we have a constant resultant force, the acceleration and mass are going to be inversely proportional to each other. And what that means is the bigger mass, the smaller the acceleration we are going to get. And we would get a graph like we can see on the right for a constant resultant force. So let's again have a look at a few scenarios to see how well you've understood this. So first off, we've got an object that has the speed versus time graph shown and it wants us to describe the resultant force so um, what you should know from before is that the acceleration is the gradient of a speed versus time graph so we can see that the acceleration of this object is constant because it's a straight line graph and if the acceleration is constant we know that therefore the resultant force must be constant and we can also see from this graph that speed is increasing so that tells us the resultant force must be in the same direction as the object's motion there so those are the two things we can learn from looking at this graph let's have a look at a second graph so describe the resultant force using this, this graph 
So again, pause it, come up with your own answer, and then we'll go through it. So this graph, we can see the speed stays the same the whole time. So what does that mean? Well, it means that the acceleration is zero. And if the acceleration is zero, that means resultant force is zero, or there's no force acting. That's what we can see there in the answer there. That's what we can work out about the resultant force. So one last scenario for you. Again, another speed versus time graph looking to describe the resultant force. Again, pause the video, come up with what you reckon the answer is, and then we'll take a look at it. Okay, so we can see that the speed is decreasing. So we know this object is decelerating. It's a straight line graph, so we know the deceleration is constant. And that tells us the resultant force is constant. The other thing we can tell from the graph is that the resultant force must be in the opposite direction to the object's motion because speed is decreasing. So that's what we can work out about the resultant force from that graph. Okay, so that finishes us looking at describing Newton's second law. Let's look at how we can apply it in different calculations. So because the equation is F equals MA, essentially there are three different forms we can use to calculate things. So the first thing that I'd like to highlight is the force must be measured in newtons, the mass must be measured in kilograms, and the acceleration in meters per second squared to be able to put those values into this equation. So that's something to bear in mind. Um, so what we're going to do is find the other forms to be able to calculate mass and to be able to calculate acceleration. Because using F equals MA, we can calculate the resultant force. So on the left, you can see the way we can rearrange it to work out acceleration. We divide both sides by the mass and then cancel the masses out on the right hand side. And then if we want to calculate the mass, we just have to divide both sides by the acceleration and cancel the accelerations on the right hand side. And we get the two equations shown in red boxes to use to calculate the acceleration and the mass. So let's have a look at some examples of putting this into use. So we've got an object with a resultant force of 20 newtons applied to it that causes it to have constant acceleration of 5 meters per second squared. Calculate the mass of the object. So pause it, have a go at this question, and then we'll have a look through it. So if you could look back a couple of slides, this is the equation form we've got to calculate the mass. Uh, we've already got the force in newtons, so we can put 20 straight in. We've got the acceleration in meters per second squared again, so we can put that in. And that gives us a mass and it comes out in kilograms there, 4.0 kilograms. Okay, so that's uh, one question. Let's make it slightly more difficult. But a 200 gram object that has a constant resultant force of 10 newtons, calculate the acceleration. So again, pause the video, have a go, and then we'll go through it. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is turn the mass into kilograms before we can put it in the equation. So you can see there I've divided it by a thousand because there are 1000 grams in a kilogram. So that gives us a mass of 0 0.200 kilograms. Now we can put it into our equation. So force is 10 newtons, so it's already in newtons, so that's fine. Uh, mass is 0.2, and when we put that in, that's going to give us an acceleration of 50 meters per second squared there. Okay, so that's how we can use our Newton's second law. So that concludes what I'm going to look at in this video today. So hopefully now you look reflecting on these things you can do each of these four things um, if you can't it's time to go back to that relevant section of the video and go through it again um, if you have any questions for having watched this video please do comment and let me know i'd be more than happy to answer any questions but thank you very much for taking the time to watch